working on this particular journey with us yet again as we continue to celebrate women in their various uh, spaces. My name is Sandra Kahonde coming to you live from Broadcast House, Nile Avenue. Well, this morning we're talking um, more to do with engineering, having women in engineering via construction, uh, listening to their challenges, their achievements, and uh, what of encouragement from them as far as construction is concerned, how the sustainability, how it tops up the economy, the unique challenges, and how they've uh, overcome such obstacles, and how come they're taking those particular spaces uh, for us to have a beautiful space, to, a beautiful world to live in, and then nurture the young generations to come, shaping a lot that is to do with studies, trying to figure it out, where can I place my child and what can I do, can I really flourish, can I excel as a woman when it comes to engineering and construction, then and much more for today's uh, conversation. Well, I have interesting interesting guests on the show, I'm lucky every single morning and blessed uh, to be hearing such stories come through from uh, different women as they do business in various spaces on a daily. Uh, this morning, I'm joined by Jacqueline Nachito. Uh, she's a civil engineer, engineering technologist. She's right next to me. And uh, next to Jacqueline, you're going to be seeing Diana Anu. She's a construction engineer and a project manager. Uh, those are our guests for the day. They're into engineering and construction. And uh, well, this morning, I want us to, uh, to explore women engineers uh, play a key role in coming up with creative solutions and making our world more sustainable through construction practices. But before we get into our topic of discussion, let the ladies greet you, a dear viewer, who makes it a point every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, to join us for these episodes. That is from there of 10 a.m till 11 a.m. Hi ladies, you're most welcome. Hi. <laughs> Happy to have you <laughs> this you. morning. I'll, I'll start with Diana. Yes, uh, thank you Sandra for having us here and I, I must say very grateful and we really appreciate this platform that you've created for us women um, to share our messages, share our experience and uh, be an inspiration to other women out there mm -hmm. so that uh, we can build our, our space in this uh, uh, m m basically male dominated environment mm -hmm. yes tell us more about you something unique something special mm, <laughs> maybe something course, special maybe about course, me your, <laughs> maybe your course was really that interesting uh, i think for me the most in i have to talk about everywhere i go i'm a nalongo <laughs> a mother of uh, two sets of twin girls hey, uh, they I bring me to, so much pride <laughs> yes <laughs> to be close. So i think for me um that comes first. I'm mean, a no longer first, and then uh, other things come in. Yes, and I'm also an engineer, mm -hmm. a civil engineer. I trained as a, I did a lot, a very interesting projects around town. Uh, right now, even when I move around, I, I am, I'm very proud of some of the, the projects that have uh, been associated with over the years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting to be here and, uh, and share these uh, experiences today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, for someone out there who's watching, proud to be a woman. <laughs> well, next to Diana, I'm having Jacqueline. How have you been? Tell us more about Jacqueline. Something special about you? Well, lots of special things. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I'm Jacqueline Nachito. I'm a chartered engineering technologist, a chartered boss in the UK and in Uganda. I've been practicing for the past 12 years. And it's been an amazing experience. Well, my journey into engineering is not uh, the straightforward journey. So for any girl out there, it's possible. I started with a diploma in architecture and practiced for two years and then went back for a higher diploma in building construction and civil engineering. So I've been practicing most of my time with uh, a multinational, multidisciplinary firm, consultancy firm, uh, which has both architecture, structural engineering, building services, which is uh, mechanical and electrical engineering. I've been, I've been privileged and honored to be a part of so many beautiful projects on the skyline of Kampala. And I always walk around and when I'm with my, I did that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so like some investment. That. Yes, yes, <laughs> I did that. So it's always nice to see what you've done all around you. And I'm also a content creator for construction. I run a page, a build with JK, and it's new. I was always looking for construction content, but I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. And since I'm in a space which is 24-7 construction, so I started to share 
what we do on a daily. So the sites that I go to, that I run, so it's basically educational, at, but also offering a service mm -hmm. to teach um, mostly my followers what we do, what those terms are demystifying and breaking down the big names mm -hmm. to a level that, you know, we, we can all understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm also a mother to <laughs> two lovely boys. Uh, yes, and that's also something that has contributed and so much to, to who I am today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, amazing. Because mm -hmm. uh, what did you get there? I know it's not an easy, <laughs> an easy way to land where you are. Uh, it has to be passion. Uh, you have to do books, moments you really had um, to sacrifice and um, shape the kind of person you really are. What shaped you? Oh, how did you get there? Um, my journey. Were you a friend of uh, sciences? Or um, <laughs> maybe you picked, up to some, you picked up from somewhere, someone, and then you're like, she's my role model. This is what I really want to turn out to be. Well, uh, my journey into engineering is a very interesting one. My father traveled to West Nile and that's how uh, to 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 on a, to build he was an engineer himself mm -hmm. so he traveled there as a young engineer he had a, a project in the within the same community my mom comes from so that's how they met they had me and then shortly after that the relationship d didn't last you know how these construction workers are very uh, mobile in nature mm -hmm. so so every time uh, we went for maybe anything in that in on that building every, uh, everyone would tell me yeah it's your dad actually who did this so somehow it, it for me it was a way to connect the only way the only connection i had to my dad so at the back of my mind i always knew that this is the space i want mm -hmm. and uh, luckily i was gifted with the spirit of uh, of um when I was younger, not now, I had the brains for it, mm -hmm. so I, I pursued sciences and uh, I also love creating things. So engineering was a, a natural choice for me. Initially, of course, I wanted to go into architecture, but I didn't get the opportunities to do the right courses. So somehow I, I, the, the choices I take prior to joining the university led me into civil engineering, which I've grown to love and practice over the years. Yeah, it has not been an easy journey because, um, uh, like I said, my dad left shortly after. So it has been me and my mom, a very strong woman, that uh, pushed. She pushed. She was able to push me through mm -hmm. to where I am today. I've had other amazing women come and support me along the way, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also my love that if I'm able to support and mentor other women that have remained behind me to inspire them and also let them know that they can achieve a lot of great things if they prepare for it. So I think basically that, that is the, the, the area that I would love to concentrate on today uh, for a woman, even for um, other ladies that are pursuing engineering right now at the university. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it's one thing to get into the space of engineering but once you're there how do you grow how do you uh, compete to not just remain ordinary but rise and even grow into positions of uh, okay uh, just moving to Jacqueline <laughs> yes. uh, how did you get there I know you're so passionate about what you're doing and are uh, you well blessed <laughs> yes um, so for me I always wanted to be a doctor so automatically I couldn't proceed to studying medicine, but uh, growing up, my dad always had um, the plan for the house, our house, so he always gave it to me, and at the time, while we were in the house, he was, we were building the house, completing a part of it, so I was always living on a construction site, so it was always getting these layouts and interpreting them, and I developed a love for architecture and how actually something can come from paper and it can be built. So I got um, really interested in that and my dad uh, played an integral role in who I am. Uh, he's been a support uh, in terms of he was always my coach mm -hmm. so he would always coach me when it comes to school and my mom so I think for me that's how I later got into doing uh, architecture and which I practiced for 
a couple of years and then moved on to engineering. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, for the years you've been there practicing, uh, you as women, <laughs> Diana, Jacqueline, uh, you are experts, I should say, uh, with all the experience you have, and um, I believe you've nurtured so many other women out there. Uh, what would your thoughts be when it comes to other women engineers contributing to the field's growth that is to do with innovation over the years? What would be your take? Uh, yes. Um, well, when it comes to innovation, I believe that women provide a unique, unique perspective mm -hmm. when it comes to engineering because we are more end user centric, like we, we focus on the end user, first of all, because as women and children, we are mostly the end users mm -hmm. of the projects that are being in need of whatever innovation mm -hmm. it is, but also to cater to the emotional, because that is also something that is important. And also women in engineering have uh, come together uh, in the recent past and they've created mentorship programs mm -hmm. and these have been such an eye-opener i believe that you cannot go anywhere in engineering or construction without a mentor it's very important to have a mentor i've been um, honored to have a mentor a senior engineer she's uh, called uh, sylvia mutunji she's mentored me and nurtured me and showed me the that parts what to do and what not to do and i believe for me that has been such a key a key key like thing in my growth mm -hmm. so it's given me more confidence on what to do how to attack different problems how to okay mm -hmm. well Diana, what are some of those challenges that you encounter as uh, women engineers in a nation uganda and how have you tried to overcome them wow um Oh, uh, when, it, when it comes to challenges, <laughs> I would not even know where to, to begin from. Mm -hmm. uh, there's quite a lot that you have to go through as a, a, a female engineer. Because every time, yes, the first thing is uh, people are excited. Oh, a female engineer, how does that happen? And I, I, of course, it's shocking that in this uh, day and age, we still get that reaction that a female engineer, I mean, my being a female or uh, my gender should not really play a role as far as my capabilities are concerned. So uh, some of the things that actually we've been having a conversation with uh, Jackie over, you find that uh, in a space you're, you're giving out your argument, you are... Um, you are sure you're confident, you're, comp you're sure of your uh, technical competences, you're making a contribution to a discussion, mm -hmm. but uh, they'll just maybe pass right by it because uh, what, is, what does the woman have to say, the woman on the table? Mm -hmm. So they'll go ahead, say they knock, and then they still have to come back. Mm -hmm. But if the same uh, solution was offered by a gentleman, yeah, 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 actually it makes sense. They will readily take it up. And uh, uh, there's uh, so many other examples that I can give. But for a woman, you have to constantly fight to prove yourself that I belong here. And uh, with time, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. for, for the younger engineers, it's quite hard because you walk into a building and someone, you've had a conversation with them already, you've introduced yourself. 30 minutes into the conversation, they're asking you, so, so when is the engineer? <laughs> going to be here, you know. Eh? <laughs> so it's just the acceptance is mm -hmm. still quite mm -hmm. um, difficult. They mm -hmm. may, so even for someone that you've uh, interacted with over a long period of time, still finds it's not a concept that mm -hmm. easily you, you give your advice and, you know. Yeah, but um, with time, you learn, you develop the, the, the resilience required, mm -hmm. you know, to operate mm -hmm. within that space. So that is why it's also very important to mentor these, these younger people that are behind us that, you know what, in this space, once you get in a, as a woman, mm -hmm. you're going to have to prove yourself mm -hmm. up to you the last You make sure day. you position yourself, yes. place your best foot forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're given a role, you're going to give it your best shot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The male can slack. If it requires you to bang winter, please go for it. Exactly. And prove to them. Exactly. <laughs> that is a, it's a yeah. space too. Yeah. And, and, and 
uh, that pays quite a lot. Because in the beginning, by the way, it disturbs your company. If these uh, young, uh, younger engineers that are coming after us, they are already having platforms or mentorship programs that are developing those other skills that they need. How do you navigate uh, the, the, the how do you present, how do you market yourself even for the employers to say that yes, this is the, the right person for the job. Because some of those skills are not taught to you at the university. But Okay, they are taught to you at the, at the, at the university, but you need communication. Mm -hmm. And identify to, yourself. Yes, exactly. Particular. Understand yourself, mm -hmm. understand your strength, your strength, understand how to manage your emotions, you know, mm -hmm. all those things now, that is where we are trying to, to go, to make sure we make, because right now you find uh, even women in leadership worldwide, not more than 30% leadership positions are being taken up by women. You know, like recently, <laughs> attending some conference and uh, other minister challenged the women in, in the room, the particular room, Honorable Kadu, she was like, if you look at uh, the vice chancellor positions in the different universities, mm -hmm. uh, how many have taken up those spaces? Yeah. You know, we still have a long way to go yeah. as women. Well, for the viewers watching, good to have your company this morning. It's about engineering. <laughs> women, I, uh, women this morning are talking about engineering. And uh, being a national broadcaster, we still have to keep you uh, updated on what is happening in the nation. And uh, later on, uh, you'll be having a press briefing coming through. That is cabinet briefing at a media center. But for this particular conversation, we're still having a lot to share with you. And I'll let the ladies uh, talk more to do with a uh, more innovative and dynamic work environment. Well, Jacqueline, would you love to go? <laughs> yes, go first? Uh, maybe if we could uh, identify what is diversity. Mm. Uh, diversity is basically a representation of people from different backgrounds, religions, or genders, creating an environment where they feel empowered, welcome, and also where they feel like they are valued and respected for their input. So with uh, diversity and how it's important within the engineering fraternity is, well, women have a lot to bring to the table. And it would be great to actually diversify, even with the way that recruitment is done within companies, for it to be skill-based and not based on gender, and also for an inclusive environment. Because if we have an inclusive environment, I believe that women are able to be more productive. Um, let's say an example of uh, inclusivity is let's say for some work spaces they have um, let's say you have four architects on your team and you have two of them are breastfeeding and you have this uh, year in year out so I think it would be burying our heads in the sand not to provide um, areas where they feel welcome where they can actually go off and pump and store their milk and also have a space where they feel they are safe to do that. So that is very important. And I believe also diversity plays such a huge role because women have a lot to bring to the table when it comes to multidisciplinary mm -hmm. uh, engineering projects because we see things from a different angle. So if we are a part of the project at the start, um, we have we are better team players. So that is really very important because we feel like you're missing out a lot by, you know, <laughs> not having us. <laughs> not having the women. Yes, not having us a, a touch table. of a woman yeah, yeah, at some point. Yeah, the touch of a woman. So, yeah, so. Uh, what should uh, the companies, organizations do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to create more space, mm -hmm. you know, to embrace the women? Mm -hmm. That is um, promoting the, those equal opportunities mm -hmm. as you talk about the touch of women. Diana, would you go for it? Yes. Um, I think it's important for companies to recognize, first of all, the needs of, of a woman. Like I, I would like to borrow from what uh, Jackie... Um, for a woman, our needs to be able to deliver are going to vary for a man who, is going, who just needs to, to, to wake up and you know, start their day. It, it's a lot that goes into uh, being a professional woman. You have some days when the kid is sick. You have some days uh, when you're taking off for maternity. By the way, women are even being fired for going on maternity leave. Eh? That is also happening. Then you're going to have, like she said, uh, you need to take, take care of your young one. Yes. And so you, yes, we uh, we need 
uh, we have the need for sometimes you don't have where to leave your young child we need spaces you know where you can come with your child and you you work comfortably knowing that you're going, your young one is also mm. being uh, catered for so uh, employers should appreciate first of all the contribution of of, uh, of women in in workspaces and uh, see those needs and address and address them uh, appropriately mm. but also that comes even us as women we have to do some work in ourselves you know build ourselves enough that the employers appreciate our contribution and not just i uh, feel like the victims like we've been handed the the short the short stick mm -hmm. yeah but uh, we need to build ourselves mm -hmm. um work on our confidence because uh, some of the 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 perceptions mm -hmm. are that men are more confident they are more assertive they are more you know like uh, competitive and all that some women are able to do all that but those are attributes that are usually you know uh, those are qualities that are usually attributed to to men and then uh, but to to thrive even women we need to build ourselves build our confidence build if it, we should not be pushovers bambi <laughs> <laughs> uh, because someone has uh, backed a little big bit and you're mm -hmm. already you know mm -hmm. yeah so we need to have that confidence we build ourselves let us present ourselves well and uh, also push that these employers appreciate and give us the space and as women if you're in a space and you you see that there's need to push for some agendas that relate to to women you know uh, that will make it a more comfortable space for a woman you know we grow we grow as a unit eh? mm -hmm. then let's let's push for it let let's create these conveniences for women to also be able to to rise well, let's above also, our challenges let's also encourage yeah. uh, the young girls who are watching Jackie and Diana this morning <laughs> I will encourage the young girls encourage the students and the parents to invest more are investing in their children to take up these spaces at uh, the engineering field. Please speak to the students out there um, who are listening to those voices that yeah. come through on a daily, uh, the gender stereotype voices that come through, mm -hmm. uh, that this is a male-dominated environment, mm -hmm. that the ones who can do better, the ones that have a thick skin. Please, Jackie. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so if you're out there and you're a young lady and you want to join engineering, I can tell you that it's it's really amazing it's every day it's something new it's a challenge but it's a very fulfilling challenge so if you're out there don't listen to any voices if you feel that you have it within you if you feel that it's a calling and you want to do this uh, just do it uh, take on um, look for opportunities there are so many people who are willing to help just reach out to any of the people that you know who are in the engineering field there are so many organizations we have a UIPE which is ready to hold your hand and you know show you the right courses to do how to journey through your path in order to get you to where you want to be so feel encouraged that this is such a world. if you have a knack for problem solving if you want to to be innovative or if you want to create we're already here and there are so many mentors who are willing to hold your hand so many people who are willing to, to support you so feel encouraged it's possible if I've been able to do it you can also do it mm. yeah well uh, maybe just to re-echo what um, Jackie has said, Jackie has said feel free. the value of mentorship um, something that will take uh, you probably a whole decade to learn and master on your own when you have the mentor we have a forum for ladies in engineering it's a very huge community. We support each other. There are students on that forum. And uh, we would even love to, we have um, career programs that we run also like around uh, schools and please don't hesitate. Please reach out to these uh, ladies who have been through it, through these forums. And uh, yeah, it will, it will make your journey easier. But it is doable, very challenging, but it's uh, the kind of challenge that uh, you love. It's the kind of challenge that, yeah, we love to take on. Well, what are some of those lessons you can cite out? Maybe it could be a success story from innovatives that have been 
put in place that you can cite out uh, to be more inspiration for the viewer who is watching us. Maybe it could be from another country. Mm -hmm. Projects mm -hmm. that have been done by women. Okay. Or maybe a borrowing mm -hmm. what other countries have done because they've embraced uh, the power of women and they've given them that space, the engineering space, and they've flourished and there's what can be. There's something visible that can be seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, I can cite, of course, many, many examples. But uh, at the time I went to the university, in my class there were maybe about 120, uh, the total population of the class. Out of that, we were less than 15 ladies. And um, as, I, uh, as I speak now, many of them gave up because it is uh, too challenging for some. But um, now the classes are bigger. You know, you find at least maybe 20 to 30 percent of the class is ladies now. Their, their awareness is getting to them. The courses that are, were predominantly mm -hmm. left to women because oh. of all the promotion and awareness going on. More women are coming into this space. Mm -hmm. we, go, we reach out to these uh, universities and encourage, you know, the women that are there and even to the high schools and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I still believe there's more work to improve our spaces. Um, of course, as women also, uh, a lot of women hold, have held, uh, women engineers have held a lot of very important roles in this country and they are doing a great job. Mm -hmm. I don't want to name particular examples, but um, we have uh, people like engineer Aziria who is working with the uh, electricity regulatory. She's doing a very beautiful job, as you can, it speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. um, and a couple of uh, other notable women that we have. So it's, uh, I, I would say that, yeah, we are moving. We are, mm. we are moving in the right direction. We still have some work to do, but we are moving mm. in the right direction. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, Jacqueline, we'd love to add a thought to that. Desk, but unfortunately, not unfortunately, but uh, fortunately, there's so many trades out there that you as a woman can engage in. Uh, because before the hands-on, uh, Treads of engineering weren't uh, for women. That's what uh, is the narrative out there. But right now, it's very, very different. There's so many women who are doing tiling. There's so many women who are doing painting. There's so many women who are on sites right now, and they're actually masters at their craft. So, and right now we've had a gap, a wider view. So you don't necessarily have to say, "Oh, I'm going to." go out and study civil engineering or you can actually start with so many trades because you can be a master carpenter there are so many amazing carpenters right now who are women mm. and who have such amazing work that they do there are so many tilers there are so many painters because we bring such a unique perspective to this field that has all spent so many years so you can always do that yeah okay um, with the experience and the passion that you have and the different forums you've been at and at least today, uh, maybe an action plan or steps you should take for how to flourish in this engineering industry. Okay. Uh, for me, from the time someone chooses engineering as the, 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 the career that they want, mm -hmm. whether you want to admit it or not, it is uh, one step into the direction of large teams. So, and uh, leadership as a skill is not something that is trained as a university and also in our academic, the way our curriculums are, leadership is not embedded in. So there's usually a clash. That is why sometimes you find women in this very, uh, uh, these, um, very key position leadership skills. Mm -hmm. So it is synonymous to relate lady bosses to fear, you know? because uh, they, they are lacking the people skills, they are lacking the, you know, the, how to manage their emotions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I would say is that uh, women, uh, and uh, especially women in engineering, should build their leadership skills. Because uh, one day you're going to grow into roles that you're going to not just be practicing engineering, you're going to head teams that have, you know, a varied skill set. So without the right leadership skills, it becomes uh, a disaster. 
you know, uh, the, the, the reputation out there of lady bosses is, is, not, is not the best. Eh? Mm -hmm. So I think women should really strive to develop their leadership skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any tips you can share? Well, uh, one of the tips that has been a game changer for me, and I think we've been able to talk about it, it's mentorship. Uh, for the first couple of years of uh, my career, I sort of hit a plateau, and I wasn't going further, I wasn't excelling, but the moment I got a mentor, it has taken me such a short time to achieve so much. I've been able to grow so much more, because uh, with a mentor, it will save you a lot of um, heartache, a lot of having to experience, neg to experience uh, negative uh, situations. So you'll always know what to do, how to do it, how to execute it. And also, it has helped me to identify bias. I think uh, women in engineering, we face a bias a lot in so many mm. different forms, but we just don't have a word for it or how to identify it. You just feel like you're being treated a certain kind of way, but you don't have a name to it. So it has helped me um, navigate that, uh, understand what bias is, how can I navigate it and you know do better. So for me, it's mentorship, mentorship, and mentorship, yeah. Okay, um, maybe just getting to, um, I know it's a journey and uh, like Diana has been putting it, we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, we shall get there at some point as uh, women engineers in our nation, Uganda. Uh, how would you envision uh, the industry itself five years down the road if there is more uh, gender diversity and uh, inclusivity when it comes to different engineering roles that are basically looked at or tagged as for men, the managerial positions, or maybe the different roles that are right there and they're like, ah, these are for men. If that has worked out, if that, that is worked upon, how would you envision the future of the industry? Mm. Diana is thinking about it. Yes, I'm still, I'm still <laughs> thinking about that. Um, how... Uh, Jackie, would you like to take this? <laughs> diversity, yes. yeah? yeah. Oh, well, well, gender. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, I, I believe it would be a different, uh, a different playing field. I believe because all of us have daughters, all of us have uh, sisters, and if uh, engineering and STEM subjects are opened up, I believe that there's a lot of talent out there that would be thrown out there to create change, to have innovation, because I believe that women are bring a really unique perspective. So, so we need more mentors. Yes. We need, oh, yeah. affo uh, we need um, those STEM courses to be a more affordable mm. yes. and accessible mm -hmm. in the different uh, mm -hmm. fields. Yes. different institutions yes so engineering would be that much better for it mm -hmm. yeah well Diana um, also you know a lot of things are changing because of all the technology mm -hmm. the some of the perceptions that came with our generation the it's the the planes the playing fields are changing now Mm -hmm. uh, this younger generation that are, are coming in, they have uh, a lot of opportunities at their disposal. Mm -hmm. So I think also uh, the parents that, uh, that they have now are different from the parents that we, are, that we had. The kids are more exposed. So I would, uh, it would really be nice to see um, a lot more of these uh, it, uh, girl, girls that are coming up, mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to see them developed, not just into, uh, for the younger engineers, or even us as we are, not just to develop into very, uh, into very technical fields, but to see women rising into, uh, even uh, in the political scene, because uh, it's not natural to find engineers in some of these uh, spaces. Uh, we stay within our technical space, but uh, we also want to see more engineers move into leadership. Mm -hmm. We sit and whine about all the things that are going <laughs> wrong, but it would be <laughs> also nice If you had see, representatives sitting yes, on those panels. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It would also, because we, we have very brilliant suggestions, but it stays with us. We, we, we debate about it, we, we feel, sometimes even victimized, but yet we don't want to put ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, we've been celebrating our journey this start way back in March and we looked at women and ICT and uh, Jackie has been putting um, the STEM courses up there for grabs for women to embrace mm -hmm. and the young girls at that. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you incorporate ICT in your day to day? Because I know it is something that is now part of us. Everyone has to uh, get accommodated, find a space in the tech, in the tech world. Yes, I, I, I actually, let me go first. <laughs> I remember when I, when I first left the university, the generations right before us, they were doing everything manually, by the way. Be it drawings, be it um, do, uh, making calculations for the building materials, everything was manual. So when we reached, uh, when, I, when I got out of the university, we had uh, one, one, uh, one engineer. His office was even unique. He had like a whole room of a drawing board, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so we found it a bit, a bit cumbersome. But uh, for us, when we came out already, ICT was being embraced, especially for doing drawings, for, for doing even quantities. You just feed in the parameters of the building, mm -hmm. and then you have like a whole heap of drawings come out of, you know, a software. Um, of course, I, as you come out, you have to also like pick up really fast. Mm -hmm. Now it has even advanced much more. We have um, newer technologies that have come up. You can get certified as a, a building's information manager, mm -hmm. which is uh, such an advanced tool to use. So, um, and uh, you will not, most likely, you will not get this kind of uh, training in school. They concentrate on the engineering concepts. But as far as ICT is concerned you ha and other technologies concerned, you really have to keep up. Go for conferences. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to be alert. Know uh, what is being done where in the field of technology. Mm -hmm. So to, to stay abreast and make sure you're not uh, staying behind and still using drawing boards uh, mm -hmm. in, this, <laughs> in this day and age. Well, yeah. it, it require, it would, you would require to have a lot of space <laughs> yes, exactly. Work, yeah. And uh, you know now working is portable. Well, we don't have those kind of spaces anymore. People mm -hmm. are working out of their laptops in their homes. So Instead of uh, sitting in a warehouse. Exactly. You will <laughs> not carry your, you know, your drawing board is not portable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, interesting. For the viewers still watching, uh, good to know you're following this particular conversation. Always here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, celebrating women, that is what we do as a national broadcaster. Uh, just getting to know how Jacqueline incorporates the ICT part. How has it is your work? Well, uh, I don't think now in this day and age you can actually pull off a project without having to use uh, IT or ICT. Uh, in terms of the software that we now use, it's more advanced. Uh, you'll find that right now um, what is uh, taking the, the engineering uh, industry by storm is building information modeling, which is BIM. And BIM is uh, mostly basically how we do a three-dimensional three uh, model, which incorporates all the disciplines into one model. So it helps mm. us prevent clashes here and there. So it does a lot. And without it, I don't think we are able to produce uh, foolproof buildings. Mm. So ICT is very crucial. And right now with the... Um, with the coming of uh, AI that you couldn't do before in terms of uh, rendering, in terms of uh, seeing, um, because when we do a design, sometimes you can, you need to visualize it, and AI has uh, taken visualization to a whole other level, and it's really quite interesting, and I believe that is such um, a sector for us to explore and to, to go into. Mm -hmm. More students and more girls taking up these uh, spaces mm -hmm. as, far as, engineering, as far as engineering is concerned. Uh, what needs to be done for you to have a conducive environment as women engineers, especially in a country, Uganda, or more so to that, uh, maybe uh, what needs to be done to recognize or celebrate uh, the women engineers mm -hmm. in regards to the achievements or celebrate Diana, celebrate mm -hmm. Jackie, mm -hmm. so that we have more women taking up these spaces. What needs to be done? Um, for example, what you're doing here with us mm -hmm. is uh, something that is really commendable because mm -hmm. uh, this is a national uh, television. So we are reaching out, you know, so people are, uh, they, they get to know, they get to be inspired. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really beautiful, we appreciate. And also, 
I think as, as women who have been through it, have seen it, mm -hmm. we also need to get out of our comfort zones, out of our shells, and uh, pick about all the good things that uh, women are doing. There's by the quite a number. Mm -hmm. I think on, on our forum alone, and not everyone is on, on that forum, mm -hmm. we are over a thousand, but mm -hmm. there are some, I know actually so many more who are not on, on those platforms that we are on. So there's quite a lot of women in engineering, but uh, very silent. Like uh, I'm sure when she mentions <laughs> that we have a lot of uh, the ones in construction, are yes. they shy? Oh. Yes, they are. That, yes, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most people yeah. go into uh, technical trades, mm. or they are not. They are not the kind of people who like the limelight a lot. They tend to be shy people. Mm. Now we, hope they're, not, they, we hope they're not crossing and going to other continents. <laughs> they have to stay here. Yeah, even, even, that, even that is happening. A lot of them are, are crossing over. So, um, uh, um, so we need to talk about... Yeah, that is basically what mm. I can think of. Mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Maybe Jackie, you can add to. <laughs> Jackie, how can we celebrate you? Because <laughs> I know at the end of the day, mm -hmm. as someone out there was watching, they've mm -hmm. made up their mind. They're like, yes, I need to really be like that. And I can mm -hmm. make it like Jackie. Mm -hmm. They've made it. They've, they've already made that decision. Mm -hmm. um, how can we embrace or celebrate you people? Um, we need more women to take up these spaces. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I think uh, Diana has probably What is interesting, like in these conversations we've been having, mm -hmm. <laughs> women in aviation and in in the mm. entrepreneur world, yes. in health. I've yes. not had anyone cry out and say government at Riambia. Yeah? No, no. Yeah. no, 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 no. We know what we, <laughs> yes. what we took on. We knew that we took this on and it was yeah. good. The yes. women are basically put on their shoes and they're like, yeah, yeah we are going to manage these boots. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Like, uh, like, okay, just to add on what I just mm -hmm. said. Um, we know of women in engineering. She mentioned there are a lot of carpenters. Recently I saw, uh, of course, they are there, but do you know any lady carpenter who is doing roofing anywhere? <laughs> they are there, but mm -hmm. no one knows that ladies can even go into carpentry. Mm -hmm. we, had, we have ladies that are, who are doing plumbing. We have ladies that are plumbers. Mm -hmm. We work with them. But no one knows that women have actually gone into to, that field. Yes, into that field. So we, we need such platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, some platforms we are able to. Uh, UBC, like what you've done for us, we really appreciate. So we need more of these opportunities to talk about what we are mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. So you should get into your <laughs> get into the, the page, the forum, <laughs> yeah. and bring us more women. Exactly. <laughs> yes, we should. Yeah. <laughs> we should stop being shy and <laughs> exactly yeah. being behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, what I could say, where I will say, government at mm -hmm. is uh, on sites. There are quite a number of young ladies who are doing. Um, Lack on sites. Mm -hmm. So we have most of them like on sites. You, if you go to any site, you'll find them uh, cleaning, you'll find them sweeping, you'll find them picking up here and there. And these girls are really, really hardworking. However, they may not have the, the, the support that they need in order for them to thrive. Because I believe that they are willing to work and there is a lot of um, work which is out there and they want to take up, but there are no um, laws in place. This is a special uh, facility, to make toilet facility for the ladies that are there, because most of the times you'll find them sharing one facility on site because they mm. have it that it's only the men who are on site, so they don't uh, provide for that. Or maybe they say even just sanitary uh, facilities for them when they're in that time of the month. And so many other things for, there are so many challenges that these young ladies go through. And I believe if we have some laws in place, it would really go a long way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw an advert uh, one time in uh, one of the local dailies where they, it, they were advertising for a job and uh, they said specifically um, the positions were for men. You get it? Eh? So we also need some sort of, uh, like that advert ran, they did the recruitment, no one picked it up, it just projects. Mm -hmm. So why would something like this just slide pl past the, you know, mm -hmm. the people who should have taken it up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, before we let you go, um, speaking to the women, those who are hesitant, maybe because of gender-related issues or maybe societal, 
issues and they don't want to take up this space. Mm -hmm. What would you say <laughs> to them? Uh, well, they're still locked up into their own world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Let's it's remember it's that we don't work up this space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because of the societal issues that come through. Well, it's time to be bold. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think the time is long past for us to hide behind the curtains. It's time for us to be bold. It's time for us to come out here. You will be amazed when you come out, actually. You will be embraced. I'll bet it will have its challenges, but uh, the time for us to hide is so many platforms. There's so many. There's so much that you can do to contribute to, to this space using your own social media. It's something as small as that. You can always start something. So yeah, it's being brave. It's, it's a time to be brave. Yeah, yeah. and like Jackie said, um, no one is going to attack you for wanting to follow your dreams. We are here, myself, Jackie is here, and we have so many other women that are, are ready to support and walk this journey with you. So, um, you know, I, I, the saying is in Kiswahili, but, uh, you know, we are stronger together. So reach out mm -hmm. to us. We are very... You can still say it in Kiswahili. <laughs> <laughs> We, did, we don't want to say Kiswahili died in Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so just reach out to us. We are ready to walk that journey with you. There's a lot of people that have done it ahead of you. So this will not be so... So may, you have your own unique journey, but uh, we've been through some of these experiences before. So you don't, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Maybe giving a positive remarks <laughs> when it comes to women, women taking up these spaces yeah. and uh, the contributions we've had in society. Mm. Yeah, before we let you go, as uh, you share a word of encouragement. I th we've done a good job. Mm -hmm. You don't hear a lot of scandals involving female engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm not there. there. Mm. Once you're there, you stay. Yes, once, w once you're there, you, you stay. <laughs> yeah, once you're there, you stay. Uh, we've done a, a good job. There's a lot of build, uh, projects on the skylines of uh, our country, like she says, mm -hmm. that have been purely led by women. So we are doing a great job. Can we cite out those buildings? Some hmm. of them. <laughs> uh, for, I don't know. Maybe sometimes for mm. uh, privacy reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we yeah. would not want to mention mm -hmm. some of them. But Defiance I know. get invoiced by marketing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Personally, I've, uh, I've contributed to a lot of projects and I've also led many teams on many of these projects. Mm. For example, the roofing factories. Mm -hmm. Those were some of the projects that I was heavily involved in, in Namave and also Luboa. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of others, especially industrial buildings, that has been my biggest strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of these uh, commercial buildings around town. 22 Jackie. Uh, yeah, yeah, these women uh, mm. have shattered ceilings eh? <laughs> when it comes to engineering <laughs> itself. Your presence as an engineer as mm. you encourage the person who's watching you. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I would love to say that it, this is an exciting, I would use the word exciting, this is an exciting career path. Uh, every day you get to you know, solve problems because that's what engineers are for. Mm. It's for solving problems. You don't get into the office and you do mundane work. What you did yesterday is what you do mm. today. No, 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 no. It's every day is we are solving a different problem, and it gives such uh, satisfaction at the end of the day to know that you've done something so different, something new, and it's it's a constant. So, engineering should be encouraged to to join us to to be a part of us. We're we are a group that is welcoming, so don't be afraid. Just come our way. It's, it's amazing. Programs coming your way, and that also include an update of coming from Media Center uh, to do with Cabinet pre Press Briefing. And uh, before we let our guests go, as uh, you enjoy your Tuesday, uh, just uh, hearing from Diana and uh, Jackie, what has made you stay where you are? <laughs> Diana, what has made you stay um, in that field? So, like she mentioned earlier, to see something on paper being realized. Sometimes I have uh, projects that I've interacted with only on paper, never been to the site. And then one time maybe I'm dr driving through Western Uganda and I can recognize that, that uh, building because I lived with it first of all in my brain for so long, mm -hmm. and then on paper, but I've, uh, maybe physically, for s one reason or another, I've never seen it. So it's very exciting to see that you're creating something from nothing. 
a bush and you're making it into habitable spaces that has been one of the things that mm -hmm. uh, like I sleep at. <laughs> yeah, ex that has been nice and I think also uh, it's also very rewarding in terms of money it's one of those careers that is, mm -hmm. is well paid we, mm -hmm. which I should well you won't like. have issues of like uh, the money is like he signs a better check <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly yeah so it is in terms of uh, in terms of rewarding it's very rewarding it's well paid and um, uh, women we have the the strength for it we don't sell ourselves well enough unfortunately mm -hmm. but women really have what it takes Mm -hmm. to, to be in, in this space. Sometimes we lack the confidence for one reason or another, but we can actually take on these men. Mm -hmm. oh, Jackie, what has made you stay? Well, uh, for <laughs> me... You're counting more and more. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, it's the passion. I have a passion for construction. Like I could wake up in the morning and be on site the whole day and not even feel the exhaustion because just like Diana said, it's you the passion the for creating. Away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you push <laughs> the hills away. Yeah, you push the hills away. And it's, it's and the passion for creating. Mm. I mean, just seeing something come from your mind and just, you know, creating it brick by brick and it yeah. comes to life. I think for me, it's what I'd call we breathe life into things. So yeah. mm -hmm. I think that keeps me going each and every day despite the challenges and also, I'd like to say to our colleagues that, because mostly we work with men, they're actually wonderful people to yeah, work with. True, yeah, true. <laughs> they're wonderful people to yeah. work with. There's a lot of laughter. There's a lot of, you true. know, that you share with mm. them. So they're amazing people. So it's an amazing environment. And even on site, uh, if you get the hang of it on site, it's an amazing environment to be yeah. in. There's lots of conversation. There's lots of learning. I think every day you learn something new. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that keeps me here. Yeah. <laughs> well, salute to the men, like she puts it. For those of you who have been supportive, mm -hmm. the communities out there, the families, the ones that have been supporting are these women to take up different spaces and enjoy, and then making them enjoy their day-to-day -day work. And also, um, salute to the forums you're in mm -hmm. and the rest of the other engineers. Greetings to them. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you uh, for standing out. I, I know you've been a great inspiration for this particular episode and uh, role models. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who will be looking out, they're going to be looking and asking, Sandra, how can I get <laughs> Diana? How can I get Jacqueline? Mm -hmm. Well, for today's episode, uh, we had our guests for the day. Uh, today I was joined by Jacqueline Nachito. Uh, she's a civil engineer, engineering technologist. And I was also joined by Diana, a new construction engineer and a project manager. They've been a great, uh, they've really been a great inspiration to us, uh, making us understand as they share their knowledge and the different ideas are making. It has been easier for us. It's, they've made it easier for us to know that uh, you can actually Take up these spaces more so for women. Engineering is exclusive for each and everyone out there. We wish you all the best. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Um, can they get to your socials? Yes. Uh, I'm Anya Diana mm -hmm. across all the social media platforms mm -hmm. LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and uh, I think Twitter. No, not Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> Twitter and uh, Instagram. And same name. <laughs> yes, same name. Anya <laughs> Diana. Maybe the spelling. Double A mm -hmm. NYU. Uh, D I A double N A H. Uh -huh. That is Anya Diana. Mm -hmm. Yes, across all the platforms. They can send all the questions and everything before yes. they come storming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how can they find Jackie? Uh, I'm on Instagram. I run a page. It's called Build with JK. So it's literally where I spend a lot of time uh, educating, teaching, sharing everything construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm trying to find a way of introducing myself again or signing out in a different <laughs> way. I'm engineer. <laughs> I welcome. Feel like, I feel like I'm already an engineer. <laughs> we shall still welcome yeah, you. Welcome to the, you. Yeah. <laughs> well, my name is Sandra <coughs> Cajon. It's been a pleasure spending time with you this Tuesday. Looking forward to having more of your company tomorrow, same time, same place. God bless you. We love you. Keep watching. You'll be safe.